Salam alaikum. Today I'm going to talk with you about a very beautiful country. It's not so famous for its wine. I think it's even not in the top 20 of the country producing wine. Yet if you are in Europe, there are good chances that you already try wine from there. I'm talking about Morocco, of course. Okay, so last week I traveled to Maroc in order to do some surfing and to discover some amazing wines. Unfortunately, because I traveled on a low budget and mainly by public transportation, it was quite difficult for me to visit some wineries. And also another thing is Morocco is a dry country, it's a Muslim country, so it's very hard to actually find places to drink wine. But don't worry, I found some really good stuff that I'm going to share with you. But first of all, check out this map. Here you can see that in Morocco, there are lots of agricultural areas to go by. Most of them, they are in the north of the country, as the sun is way too hot to grow anything but olive trees, palm trees and argan trees. During my trip, I focused to stay on the Atlantic coast nearby Essaouira and Agadir because it's there that you can find some amazing waves. Here is a footage of the bay in Nimswan and what an, an amazing wave actually, it was awesome. Actually, I really advise you to go there. You must pay a visit there because even if you're a beginner or an advanced surfer, you can find waves that suit to you. And one also very important aspect is that the locals there are very, very friendly, so ah, it was awesome. But let's stop to talk about surfing, we are here to talk about wine. So about the Moroccan wine, you must know that it is the Greek and the Phoenician that started to grow grapes there during the 6th century before Jesus Christ, so very long time ago. But it's during the French colonization that the production start to kick off because back at that time in Europe we had the phylloxera epidemic and Spanish, French and Italian had a huge shortage of grapes for their own production. So they started to grow grapes in Morocco in order to bring them back to Europe in order to make their mainland wine. Back at that time, it was quite common to find some Moroccan grapes into some French wine. I know that sounds crazy, but at that time, they focused more on quantity over quality. Um, yeah, so then the French, they left the country after the end of the colonization and people start to abandon the vine. So the quality decreased a lot, the production also decreased a lot and Moroccan wine had quite a bad reputation. But since already like 40 years, uh, some big corporations such as Castel Group, for example, started to invest a lot and lots of money there in order to, to increase the quality of Moroccan grapes. And it works. Like, I think it works a, a, a lot because here I found this wine, it's called Chateau Roslan from Les Coteaux de la Tasse AOC. The name of the domain, if I'm not mistaken, yes, is Les Celliers de Meknes. It's a Chardonnay, so it's a white wine, and the vintage is 2020. So I already opened this bottle because, to be totally honest with you, I already shoot this video and I was outside and because it's so hot there is too many insects and the, the song was horrible so I shoot it again but don't worry I just opened it like one hour ago and I already tried it and I love it so let's try it again <laughs> anyway I'm very happy to try it again because I can tell you this wine is amazing so First of all, you can see that the color is quite pale, pale lemon color. 
and what is very interesting about this wine is that you don't need to take the glass in hand to smell the aroma like it's so pronounced like oh my god from here i can only smell it and you can smell some very nice aromas of cooked apricot uh, orange marmalade lemon of course and oh my god that's awesome the taste also is fabulous so of course it's a dry wine the acidity is quite medium, it's not too high, it's quite a round wine, the shape is round. Also the body is like medium body, this is not a light body wine. What is impressive about this wine is the finish, it's quite long, it's very long finish and at the end you have some notes of buttery, uh, like buttery flavor and that come from the oak, they are using French oak for six months and I believe they are using, using new oak because you can feel it. And again, you have the aroma of like cooked apricot, cooked orange marmalade, uh, le confit, uh, lemon confit. Um, oh, that's awesome. And also you have some notes of um, almond. And that's quite genuine about this wine. And what is very interesting about this one is like, it doesn't taste like a Burgundy Chardonnay or Sons of France Chardonnay. It's very like, I can't say it's typical because that's my first time trying a Moroccan wine <laughs> but I, I can understand that this wine is coming from a quite old place because all of, of those cooked aromas but also so it's very kind of sweet although it's a dry wine it has some like sweety flavors but it's very very elegant and wow I'm, I'm so impressed about this wine really the quality of this wine is amazing also, I purchased it for 25 euros, so yeah, I think that's, that's quite worth it. It's not uh, easy to drink wine like uh, for every day, it's more like a, yeah, it's an elegant wine actually, very elegant. It's like highly recommended by Quentin. <laughs> and yeah, Chateau Roslan, yeah, very good. At the end of this video, if you like it, don't forget to add a thumb up. And also, if you already tried some Moroccan wine, please write it in the comment section i would be happy to to have a look and see you next time bye bye